Today we will be discussing preferred stock. All corporations issue common stock, but only about one in four corporations issue preferred stock. Unlike common shareholders, preferred shareholders typically do not have voting rights. Preferred shares typically have a par value, just like common shares, which usually serves as the minimum amount that the shares can be sold at. The journal entry for the issuance of preferred shares is similar to common shares. Consider watching the video on issuing common shares for more detail on the journal entries for issuing stock. Preferred shareholders typically have a preference for receiving dividends before common shareholders. More detail on how that works will come later in the video. Unlike common stock, preferred stock has a predefined dividend amount specified by a percentage listed along with the preferred shares. To calculate the yearly amount of the preferred dividend for a corporation, multiply the number of preferred shares by the par value and then by the percent. For example, a company with 20,000 shares of $10 par 5% preferred stock would have a yearly preferred dividend equal to 20,000 times $10 times .05, which equals $10,000. This means that the first $10,000 of dividends would go to preferred shareholders. If more than 10,000 were paid in dividends, the additional amount after 10,000 would be paid to common shareholders. Important note, remember that corporations are not required to pay dividends. Even though there is a yearly dividend that can be calculated for preferred shareholders, there's no guarantee that the company will end up paying that amount. To help you understand better, let's look at a quick example. Let's suppose that a corporation pays a $10,000 preferred dividend, and for the past several years, the dividend has been paid. Let's say that in 2018 and 2019, no dividends were paid. If the company was to pay $30,000 in dividends in 2020, how much should the preferred shareholders get? Should it be just the $10,000, because that's the yearly amount, with the rest going to common stock, or should the company make up for the missed years and pay the entire $30,000 to preferred shareholders? The answer to that question depends on if the preferred shares are cumulative or non-cumulative. For cumulative preferred shares, we keep track of the dividends in missed years. The total of unpaid preferred dividends are called dividends in arrears, and have the potential to be paid in a future year. In our example, this is when the $30,000 would be paid to preferred shareholders in 2020, which is made up of $20,000 of missed dividends in arrears from 2018 and 2019, and the regular $10,000 preferred dividend in 2020. For non-cumulative preferred shares, any missed preferred dividend is forgotten. $10,000 would be paid in 2020 in our example. We ignore the missed dividends from 2018 and 2019. In the real world, cumulative preferred shares are more common than non-cumulative preferred shares. So now let's look at a more in-depth example. The problem says that a company currently has 2,000 outstanding shares of $15 par value 10% preferred stock, as well as 3,000 shares of $5 par value common stock. We are to determine the amount of dividends paid to each class of stock each year under each of the following two assumptions using the provided dividend table. Over here in the left we have the information giving the dividends that were paid in the years 2018 through 2020. We will have to decide how these dividends are going to be split up between the preferred and common shareholders. The first assumption is that the preferred stock is cumulative, and the second assumption is that the preferred stock is non-cumulative. The first thing that we'll have to do is to calculate the preferred dividend. Remember, the preferred dividend can be found by taking the number of shares, multiplied by the par value, and then multiplied by the percent. In this case, we have 2,000 preferred shares, so we take 2,000, multiply by the $15 par value, and then multiply by 10%, or 0.1. When we multiply those three numbers together, we get $3,000 as the preferred dividend per year. Now let's look at the first case, when the preferred stock is cumulative. Remember, if the preferred stock is cumulative, we have to keep track of any missed dividends, and that's why we have this last column here for dividends in arrears. So in the first year, there were $4,000 in dividends paid. So since the preferred dividend is only $3,000, the preferred shareholders are going to get $3,000. And anything left over after the preferred dividends have been paid will be paid to common stock. So there's $1,000 left over. And if we add those two numbers together, we get the $4,000, which was the total dividends paid. There are $0 in arrears because all of the preferred dividend was paid this year. Next, in 2019, $1,000 in total dividends were paid. Since preferred shareholders have the preference for receiving dividends first, 
the entire $1,000 is going to go to preferred shareholders. Now, the preferred dividend is supposed to be $3,000, but there wasn't even $3,000 total paid in dividends, so of course we can't pay them $3,000. So that means that the preferred shareholders are missing out on $2,000 of the preferred dividend. So the amount that's been missed out here is going to go into arrears. So we have $2,000 of dividends in arrears. There's no leftover money to pay to common shareholders, so we're going to have $0 to them. And again, the total is going to be $1,000. 1000 plus 0 is 1000 which is the same as the total dividends paid. Next, in 2020, $7,000 in total dividends were paid. Now this time, there's plenty of money to pay the preferred shareholders their entire $3,000. Plus, we can make up for the $2,000 in arrears that were missed from the previous year. So the total preferred dividend is going to be 3000 plus 2000 equals $5,000. Now anything left over will go to the common shareholders. So after we've taken 5000 away from the 7000 we have 2000 remaining. This gives us a total of 5000 plus 2000 equals 7000 so that's good. Adds up to the total cash dividends. And this time we have $0 in arrears. Next let's look at the case when the preferred stock is non-cumulative. So first in 2018, there were $4,000 in total cash dividends paid. The preferred dividend is $3,000, so $3,000 goes to the preferred shareholders. There's still $1,000 left over after the preferred shareholders have gotten their dividend, so that $1,000 will go to the common shareholders. And the total is $3,000 plus $1,000 equals $4,000. Now notice that we don't have an additional column here for the dividends in arrears. That's because when the stock is non-cumulative, we don't keep track of any missed dividends. Next, in 2019, a total of $1,000 in cash dividends were paid. That's less than the preferred dividend of $3,000, so the entire amount goes to preferred. And there's nothing left over for common. And the total is $1,000. Next, in 2020, $7,000 in total cash dividends were paid. Since the preferred dividend is $3,000, $3,000 goes to the preferred shareholders. In this case, there are $4,000 left over, and that goes to common. 3,000 plus 4,000 gives us $7,000. All right, we are finished. Now just a couple of comments on the charts that we've created here. Make sure that when the preferred stock is non-cumulative that your preferred dividend is never larger than the preferred dividend that you calculated. There's never any carryover from previous years, so 3,000 was the largest that your preferred dividend could ever be. Next, always make sure that your totals add up to the totals of the cash dividends paid. So we had 4,000 here, 4,000 here, 4,000 here, we're good. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 7,000, 7,000, and 7,000. I know these charts can be a little bit confusing at first, so if you're having difficulty, rewatch this video and pause along the way to make sure you understand how each number was calculated.